I wanted to describe the movement that we're making from one place to another as we move into sovereign sexuality. So what it's not, and then what the answer is to that, what the answering movement is that shifts that. So the first thing is what a sovereign sexuality is, is it is not determined by pathologizing. So I think it was Joe who was talking about um, that feeling of like, is something wrong? You know, what's happening here? So when you're moving into sovereign sexuality from a deep feminine place, there is a way that we are moving completely away from pathologizing. We are not going to be doing that anymore. There is a choice that we're making here to basically say, look, whatever is happening with my sexuality, in my being, in my needs, in my intimate relationships, there's nothing wrong with that. There is an almost immediate impulse for most of us for many reasons which I won't get into which is to pathologize what arises in us whatever it is you know if we're not feeling sexual if we're feeling angry if we're feeling disconnected if we're feeling numb if we're feeling like excessively sexual and kind of can't can't find fulfillment what we are not going to do and what we're going to support each other in not doing is we're not going to pathologize. We're going to move out of this paradigm of there must be something broken here into a place of understanding that you might be shaped and there are things that are moving, but you're never broken. There's nothing wrong. We are going to be looking towards, as you turn towards yourself and your sexuality in this way, you're going to be looking towards the sacred need inside of whatever is arising, the wisdom, and the rightness. So that is actually a huge shift. And I invite you to just feel into where you are in that, in that whole, um, in that. Where do you sit in terms of, do you tend to reside inside of a certain amount of pathologizing everything that goes on with you, that it always has to look a certain way, or it should, or maybe it's because this happened in your past and that's why you feel this, or maybe you got broken in this way, or what's, that's, it's understandable, but it's not true. What's true is that our sexuality has a deep, deep wisdom in it. It ebbs and flows, it changes, all, all because of a wisdom, not because of a brokenness. And when you start really turning towards that, that's when there's this repair possible of you and your relationship to yourself as a sexual being, period, right? In your rightness, no matter what has happened, no matter how it's presenting, that we're going to learn and be with and support each other in holding and developing an intimacy with ourselves that is not pathologizing at all, that is actually brings forward the, the deep wisdom that is what we actually are. Abigail is saying she's crying hearing this. She spends so much time trying to fix herself. Yeah. And Joe is saying the same, and Annie. Yeah, I think that is that is one of the deepest things that the membership is addressing, and that's why it's long term, and that's why we're doing this together. It's it's also a very insidious kind of. It happens in a moment, you know. It's like, I think if we track, <laughs> many of us would realize that there's a way that we are constantly trying to achieve some kind of portrait of something, or we are in a way of like moving towards our sexuality with, with the perception that something is wrong and needs fixing or should be changed or whatever. And that chases the unicorn away, right? So what we're, what we're doing is we're shifting our approach where our, this is where one of our deepest powers lies, is that we can shift our approach to our own sexuality and that can change everything. And that doesn't, that doesn't require anyone else to do anything. That doesn't require the culture to change. That doesn't require your past to change, right? It doesn't require your relationship to change or your sexuality to change or you to change. All it is is a different approach. And that there is huge power in that, that you're turning toward yourself in a very consciously different way. And when you turn towards yourself without pathologizing, without diagnosing and trying to fix, then what can happen is this very subtle, very sensitive, tender aspect of ourselves, i.e. our sexuality, this mysterious thing, 
will actually start to unfold. And then it blossoms and blooms. And that's what we're wanting. You know, with all the fixing, with all the path pathologizing, all we're really wanting is to bloom and to blossom and to be able to feel what we really are, to feel that true nature and to feel the, the fullness and the beauty of it, right? So Angie says she's right in the middle of moving out of pathologies into harvesting the wisdom. It's a moment-by-moment -moment awareness to stay with herself and, make, and not make herself wrong. It is. This, is. this is companioning ourselves, and it's one of the biggest ways I have a feeling we're going to be companioning each other as we move through the year. Um, so <laughs> just saying not pathologizing isn't as helpful. So where we're moving towards specifically is a deep feminine approach to your sexuality specifically. And obviously it can apply to your whole world, but we're gonna stay focused here with sexuality and intimate relationships. So a deep feminine approach, what is that? So when we, we say pathologizing, a pathological approach is to diagnose, to kind of look, to break apart all the patterns, to analyze, to try to be something different, right? Um, it's, it has that, movement to it. A deep feminine approach is to meet it, to, okay, this is what is, this is what I'm feeling, to meet it without any need to change it. That's kind of the first thing, is that we catch ourselves in that very first moment of like, I'm feeling this, I'm feeling shut down, I'm feeling wobbly, whatever. All right, fine. You know? That's what is. It's we meet it without any need to change it, and we dilate and soften around it. So rather than hardening, moving into a kind of analytical, you know, that 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 stance, we're actually going to soften and dilate around it. Softening, dilating, right? We're talking about these are these are the movements of birth. These are these are movements that the female body and female sexuality is very much made to make, right? It's not made to make penetrative movements. Deep feminine sexuality is made to open, to soften, to soften around intensity, birth, orgasm, intense emotions, right? Soften and dilate. So we're we're gonna be making the choice to soften and dilate around what we feel, meet it without any need to change it, soften and dilate around it, and then ask, just ask to be shown. Is there a need here? Is there a desire here? Is there a wisdom here? So I think it was Joe who was saying that she hasn't been in a relationship for however many years, and is she broken, you know, is something wrong? So I think that would be an example to say, like, all right, just to meet that, there is, maybe there's, I don't know what there is specifically for um, Joe, but it's like, all right, maybe there's a dormancy, a holding, a containment that's here. All right. Feel that. Okay, no need to change it. Soften around it, soften into it. All right, containment, dormancy. And then ask what the need is. A lot of the times, because we're so busy pathologizing and trying to fix and be something different, we don't actually give ourselves the opportunity to just land on the need or the desire that's there and follow it. And it's following that need that evolves our sexuality, that evolves our being. So to come to that and say, oh, wow, I have a need to, I've apparently had a need to gestate my own energy for this many years. You know, and that's been a need, and that's valid. To turn your attention towards that, for instance, and then from that to say, okay, and what has been gestating? And what does that feel like? And when does that want to open? And how does it want to open? So now you're on the pulse of it, right? So now instead of, for instance, being in a place where you're resisting the fact that you haven't been in a relationship and you're feeling dormant, you're on the pulse, of the actual life force of that dormancy, the wisdom of it, and what it's trying to bring you. So our sexuality is always trying to bring us the good. It is never trying to, period, okay? That's what's happening. But for us to actually 
come into intimacy with that and follow it is is kind of the art form, right?